I posted a video recently telling people not to buy the Kindle Paperwhite and instead buy the Kindle Oasis because I feel that's a better device. I got a ton of comments from people telling me they love their Paperwhite and the price cannot be beat for the functionality that you get. And I stand by my claim still, the Kindle Paperwhite is not my favorite e-reader by any means. And today I'll be comparing it against the Kobo Clara HD right over here. And this is a much more fair comparison because both of these are in the same price point. Let's jump into the comparison. Hi there, Rai Grichika called Sawai Grichiki Fate. My name is Manith Singh. On this channel, we talk about tech and getting things done. If you're watching this, you already know reading books on a Kindle or a Kobo is a great way to get more things done. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the buying experience for both the Paperwhite and the Clara HD. For the Paperwhite, it starts at 129 for eight gigs. If you want 32 gigs for audiobooks, it comes at 159. The one thing I really don't like about the whole Kindle ecosystem is they have this option for ads or no ads. And if you don't want ads on your screensaver when the Kindle is not in use, it costs 20 bucks extra for the privilege to remove ads from your Kindle screensaver. I find this to be absolutely ridiculous. I don't care which Kindle you're getting. This is kind of a ripoff, but the Kobo doesn't have as many options as the Kindle does in terms of price. It comes in at 119, eight gigabytes. There's no option for audiobooks or higher storage, but the other advantage is much simpler. There's no confusion between ads or no ads, and I really appreciate that from Kobo. One thing to note regarding the Kobo, it is shipped from Canada, so it does take a little extra time to get mailed to you, especially if you're in a foreign country outside of America. That's one thing to note, the Kindle is owned by Amazon, so they have prime shipping. It gets mailed very quickly. Now, one of the first things I wanna talk about here regarding the Kindle and the Kobo Clara is the build quality and the material used. The Kindle Paperwhite has this rubber back to it. I actually do enjoy this quite a bit. It doesn't feel like a cheap plastic. The Kobo Clara HD does have a plasticky feel that does take away some of the value in terms of build quality from the Kobo. So strictly regarding materials, I do think the Kindle wins that round. But when it comes to fingerprints, the Kobo takes the cake right away. The Kindle has this rubbery back, like I mentioned, and even that, gets fingerprints, which is really, really annoying. It's really hard to show on camera, but with the lighting, it's very obvious to see fingerprints on the back. And also on the front, the black bezels are a glossy type of bezel, and those get fingerprints super, super easily. Whereas on the Kobo, the plastic back actually does not get many fingerprints. It does have these little texture grooves in it, which is a whole different thing. It does get some debris stuck in there once in a while, but there's no fingerprints, which is really, really cool. And the front of the device is also a matte black finish. Again, much harder to get fingerprints on the Kobo Clara. Now let's talk about the power button on both these devices. I can't believe I'm spending so much time talking about power buttons, but it's actually a really important thing for the e-readers over here. Both of these devices suck when it comes to power buttons. That's the bottom of the display it makes no sense to me. Why do they put the power button next to the charging port? I don't know. They should put it on the side or on the top. The one thing I will say though is the Kindle does have a better power button. It's more clicky, it's more plastic. It does feel like a proper button. Whereas the Kobo Clara has this rubber, longer, flat kind of button. You kind of got to use your nail to push into it a little bit. It does work just fine, but I do prefer the button on the Kindle Paperwhite. Both of them are just really bad placement though. While we're talking about the bottom of the device, let's also talk about this charging port. Both the Paperwhite and the Clara HD have a micro USB charger. Again, if you've been watching my videos, I completely complain about this all the time. This needs to turn into USB-C. I really hope the next generation of Kobos and Kindles both have USB-C moving forward. Next thing I wanna talk about here are the bezels on both devices. In my last video regarding the Paperwhite, I made fun of the bezels on this thing and people didn't like that, but I'm gonna stand by that as well. The bezels on the Paperwhite are really, really big and you don't really notice this until you compare it against another device like the Kobo Clara. The Kindle Paperwhite has this giant chin and forehead. The chin at the bottom makes sense. You kind of put your hand there, your thumb is resting on that. So you need a big bezel for that but the side bezels are slightly bigger than the Kobo and the forehead is just huge. The one thing about the Kobo Clara is it has a six inch screen, just like the Kindle Paperwhite, but the device as a whole is actually smaller. This is in large part due to the bezels. The bezels on the Kobo Clara are just so much smaller. It makes the device itself actually more compact than the Paperwhite. 
I actually noticed this quite a bit. Again, if you're just buying the paper white, you don't compare it against the Oasis or the Kobo over here, you won't realize this, but it does make a very big difference in terms of the size of the device. Let's talk about the display specifically now on the paper white and the Clara. They both have a six inch, 300 PPI display. They're both very crispy and I really, really enjoy that. It feels like reading text on a page. It doesn't feel like you're reading on a tablet or e-reader. I really love this technology of e-ink with 300 PPI. It looks really, really nice. Now, both devices also have brightness control, which is really handy if you read it in the dark. It has the brightness level where you can adjust that. But the one thing the Clara HD has where the paper white completely loses is temperature control for warm lighting. This to me is an absolute win for the Kobo Clara. Having that warm light control at this price point is a complete knock out of the park compared to the paper white. When you read at night like me, like before going to sleep, having that warm light control makes such a big difference, not just to your quality of sleep, but you can just tell when reading that it doesn't feel like you're reading a device anymore. The warm lighting makes it blend in with the warm lighting of your room, for example. It just feels a lot nicer. If you have the night shift on your phone and you use that at night, you know what I mean. It's a subtle difference, but when reading a book and staring at a screen for maybe a half hour or an hour at night, you can definitely tell that right away. I really do hope the paper white gets this in the future. This is a really big thing they're missing out on. The Oasis has it, but the paper white really should have that feature too. One thing I also want to touch on is the performance of both these devices. They both share a one gigahertz processor with 512 megabytes of RAM. I know we're talking about some really, really high-end stuff right now, but in reality, you don't need much for e-ink devices like these. But I will say the Paperwhite just feels very, very sluggish. I actually have a whole speed test comparing the Paperwhite against another Kindle, but for the Kobo and the Kindle Paperwhite, both these compared head to head, I think there's a big difference in software optimization. They have the same tech specs, but the Paperwhite is just so much slower than the Clarity HD, I really, really see a difference there. Just like an iPhone, they don't have the same high-end tech specs as other Android phones, for example, but because Apple is optimizing the software to work so well with the hardware, they can make it seem so much faster. I really think the Kobo software is optimized better for the software and hardware experience. A few more things I want to talk about first is regarding battery life. They both have really good batteries. Any e-ink device that you buy usually has a battery that will last you weeks on end. And I haven't had any problems with this. I don't measure them exactly because you can't really do a battery test for a week or two straight but I will say I haven't had any problems there. Now there are two more things that both devices don't have. The first being page turn buttons. If you really like page turn buttons to go next and previous, you don't get those on both the Paperwhite or the Clara. You have to use a touchscreen. I don't find this to be a deal breaker at all. It's not that bad. The other thing that's missing though that I do find kind of annoying is the ambient light sensor. These sensors are responsible for automatically adjusting the brightness on the device based on the lighting conditions around you. On your phone, this happens all the time automatically. On the Kindle and on the Kobo, you really have to adjust this manually, which is kind of annoying, especially if you change locations a lot. I like to read outside sometimes during the day. And I have to adjust the brightness because it's still remembering the brightness from inside at night. There are also two things that Paperwhite has that the Kobo Claire does not have. The first being waterproofing. If you enjoy waterproofing for reading on the beach or in the pool, wherever it might be, then the Paperwhite is the option you have to get for that purpose. The Kobo is not waterproof at all. And then secondly, the Paperwhite also has color options. If you enjoy colors like this blue over here, then you will enjoy choosing a Paperwhite. Again, neither of these things to me are deal breakers by any means. I prefer things like software experience over color choice. And one more thing that's a bit more subjective is audiobook support. Again, the Paperwhite has an option for 32 gigs, which is very much required if you want to do audiobooks. Eight gigs is really not enough for audiobook storage on either the Kobo or the Kindle. So if you're an audiobook person, you have to get the higher storage option for that. I personally don't use Kindles for audiobooks. If I were to use audiobooks, I would probably use my phone for that with my AirPods. So not really a deal breaker there. Now, if I had to choose between the Paperwhite and the Kobo Clara, I would choose the Kobo Clara as the better device. It has the warm lighting support, has a better design, smaller compact form factor with better bezels, and also a smoother software experience. 
But with that being said, I think I would have to buy the Kindle because of the ecosystem. The Kindle has things like a better bookstore, in America at least, as well as support for Readwise, which I use very, very heavily. I have a whole video dedicated to the software differences between the Kindle ecosystem and the Kobo ecosystem. Link for that video right now on the screen. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.